Last time I noticed an issue where the agent uh, can get stuck if you respawn right in front of them. Let me see if I can duplicate this issue. Uh, let's go to a space that has an enemy. Okay, enemy spawn point. And he goes forward, he detects me. And he is attacking once, twice, and I refresh here. So when he's put back, he should be put in front of me attacking. Uh, let's try that again. He didn't get the message. Okay. Interesting. He has to turn around, so he isn't facing me. Ah, uh, yes, because the about agents don't have, they only have positions, they don't have rotations, which is fine. I guess the initial state might be fine. <clears throat> Here I'm about to be respawned, but let me see if, what if I'm on the other end of that? So I go to the respawn point. He's coming toward me, and I'm going to go... Okay, so he's told to come over here, attack once, attack twice, I refresh, and he's stuck. No, nope, he moved. Okay, he's okay. Let's try again. No, he's okay, okay, I can't really reproduce this time. Maybe it's if I spawn in right in front of this enemy spawner, which I think is perhaps here. I'll grab this and kill this thing. Okay. Okay, so he spawns in at this point. And two and kill. Okay, Alright. Let us come in here. I'm dead. Respawner. What if I just refresh here? Well, so far I can't I can't duplicate. It seems to be okay, so I guess we'll move on to the next thing. Let's review our next to-dos. So when a player is announced dead, it should prevent the agent from continuing to attack your corpse. So we did that. It leaves you alone. We want to freeze teleportation after death and resume teleportation after respawn. Okay, that can be a feature. After death, drop all weapons and release ammo. Okay, it's a feature. Agent moving forward. Uh, I think this was an algorithm for the locking mechanism. Receive attacking event located. Cancel go to. Okay. Avatar needs to stop moving and attack when finally upon them. Partitioning on damage or something. Detects an avatar local warrior. Okay, I think this is all done. Fix keys that open doors. I believe this works. Allow enemy agent to take a few hits before going down. Okay, that's a new feature. Play a kill animation before disappearing immediately. Okay, that's a feature. Record head and hand animations into a Babylon compatible animation format. Give enemies head and arms feature. Fix ammo box was based on metadata for number of bullets and how the door key were views components to store that information in the I think I think we're good on this for now. The inline and door maybe even bullet manager should be paused if menu is open. Okay, inline okay so when you're this says when in inline mode when 
in browser inline mode mode uh, don't allow picking up things or firing bullets when menu is open not not totally sure because what if you need to interact with the scene with something mm, maybe it's a good idea okay I'll leave that there bug in VR when trying to transform red kid floats up I think this is fixed oh no I think it'll keep going if you click the door I'll keep going let's, let's go to a door So interesting. These guys are really high up. Oh, is is the gen server still going? Yeah, if I click on them, they don't move up. Uh, that's interesting. I want to see what their position and rotation is on these on these doors. In fact, what do we what do we call these things? Orchestrator debug. So we did call them doors or keys. And we have a regular door, we have a red door, and a red key somewhere. <clears throat> Blue door, what is your position? And if you look at this, your position here is only three meters high okay so that means your gen server is still alive so if I restart the server then you should come back down to three meters high because it looks like you're way more than three meters this looks like eight meters yeah that looks more reasonable so why was that gen server still up? Because isn't it supposed to expire after after how long? This timeout is 25 minutes. So after you don't get some activity, uh, you should close that gen server. Unless I just had my computer closed and it wasn't actually invoking. Let's just make sure we're sending time out in each one of these. Okay, so this is the OK, which sends a timeout. Forward to ledger is just a function that gives back state. Okay, I think this is it. No reply, state, and time out. No reply, stay, and timeout. Because if you don't send the timeout, I believe it just gets lost. Da, 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 da. Save, 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 save. The rest of these have to give back. Handlecast is calling one of those. And member connected. Should give timeout. Uh, timeout. These have timeouts, right? <clears throat> handle cast, handle call. Timeout, 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 timeout. Handle info. Time out. I think this one doesn't need a timeout. What about the rest of this? Uh, this is kick check. Timeout. Shut down timeout.
choose a leader, choose state, state, state. If I save that. Let me just check. Elixir gen server timeout. <clears throat> the return value of init or any of the handle callbacks may include a timeout value in milliseconds if not infinity if not infinity assumed. Timeout can be used to detect a lull in incoming messages. The timeout value is used as follows. If the process has any message already waiting when the timeout value is returned, the timeout is ignored and the waiting message is handled as usual. This means that even a timeout of zero is not guaranteed to execute if you want to take another action immediately and unconditionally. If any messages arrives after arrives before the number of number of milliseconds elapsed, the timeout is cleared and that message is handled as usual. Otherwise, when a specified number of milliseconds elapsed and no message is arriving, handle info is called with timeout as the first argument. So this handles the timeout here and it just is essentially a no operation. Um, which we can just lock somewhere like, okay. So we can do IO inspect the uh, server space server timed out timed out after no activity. Okay, so I'm gonna need to start my server again. And let's go to this space, go visit the doors again. All the doors are down. And I'm going to collect a blue key. I can open up blue, blue door. Super high up. And I'm going to open up red door. Why can I open up red door? I can even open up gray door. But if I go over here and I click this again, it goes even higher. So we don't want that. And also, where was the red key? How did I open that? Were both of them just colored blue? Let's create another red key. There's a red key. Okay, do I just have it? And then make a new red door. Let's see, game constructs, uh, barrier maker. We're going to create a red door here. Uh, of course, because I already have the red key. So, oh, um, okay, so let's restart. I'm oh, sorry, but let's move some things around. So we'll move this red key over here. And that's fine. Um, let's restart our gen server. Everything goes back to its initial starting state. Come back to the doors. So and let's just check what the debugger says. Where is the other key? So we got blue door, blue key, red door, red door, red key, red key. So one of them is there. Where's the other one? So this thing. What is its position? This thing's position is at um right on top of this thing i think so let's move the blue key tools transform blue key oh they're occupying the same exact space so when i clicked on it earlier even though i couldn't see red i collected red okay and we'll move blue key over here close the menu Okay, so I want to prevent door from traveling even higher. So we kind of need to know its state, don't we? Now when we click on it, 
we're just going we don't actually store state that the door is open or not there's a door manager and the door manager is listening for for what now let's see about space gets the positions of all the entries temporary positions and it finds the mesh and then uh, determines if they were collected and assigns collection of keys it um, so <clears throat> This is if I rejoin a space, I'll get back the keys that I previously collected. This is if I collect a key now. This is if I am moving a space. Now what else is also listening to about space that actually puts the doors into place? That I think might be... scene manager I guess over here you get all the space entities and then you add in place to the position move grab entities in the hands of this about entities if no this is not about moving things into the hands of this is about the new positions entity animated offset Oh, it retains the last message in space and so if they receive some offset <clears throat> which can be either animated to somewhere or collected collected means you remove it So this could involve not just doors, just anything that was moved. Okay, so um, repo temp temp reposition of entities like opened doors. So we move it up. Entity position add in place, so that'll pop it up. So now the problem is in Door Manager, if you click it twice over here, this will just send it up again, and it sends it up by three. And what is the position of a door that isn't moved? Let's see. We'll use the orchestrator debug and ask it about a red door, for example, or a blue door. So this one, the position is zero. So it's nicely on the floor, and it's not underneath the floor. There's nothing underneath. Because if I lift this up, yeah, there's nothing here. Okay. So if position is zero, we'll move it up. But if position is not zero, we can move it back down. Okay, so we can add that logic. This will just open or close the door. So can open can open door is this and I don't think you need a key to close a door so this entity is door so if it is a door if um, mesh dot position dot y I guess you need to compare it because we might be on a multi-floor system right if mesh position dot y is 
compare it to your own uh, position. And because we're raising it by 3, so if mess position y is um, subtract. This scene active camera position y. Let me let me make this a function. Let's see, door is open. Give me the mesh, and this is a Babylon abstract mesh. So I'll move this functionality over. So we want to check if the door is open for this mesh, then we want to emit a close thing else. <clears throat> then we'll do that. So um, And we want to check if mesh distance to camera is less than three. So we're we got to be close to the camera. So uh, close enough, close to door. Give me the mesh, and then we'll make this into a function too. Cut and return. And so, if not this close to door, it doesn't matter, just return. If door is open, so then we don't need this. Copy. So, if door is open, then animate the offset by going down by 3. And uh, let's see, close this, close to door, close to door. Um, oops. Hold on, hold on. If the door type subscribe, no. Undo, 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 undo. Can't see. This is all in the constructor. So constructor, close the door. Yeah, that seems fine. What's going on here? Door manager, close the door. Oh, expect one argument, no, but that's zero. Oh, it needs the mesh. Okay. Door is open. We need to return a Boolean, so what do we need to return? Okay, yes. Um, so, do I have something to paste? No. All right, the door is already open if the position is taller than me. Right, so if mesh position Y is greater than this camera, camera position Y. Yep, if it's taller than me, then the door is open, then close it. So then we go to here and we'll go to the gray door. So we open that, get closer, open that. Okay, it's opening. I'll look up. Okay, I'm gonna click you again, closing. Bam. Do we really need three meters? about 
height. Const uh, door slide amount slide amount. Make it two point. Negative slide amount. I think it's a little bit faster. How about two seconds? Make that a speed too. How about speed? Const duration equal two, two seconds. So this becomes the duration saving all that okay gray doors where's the gray door I don't know let's ask Door, where are you? You went beneath the floor. Why? All right, let's pick up a red key. Got a red key. Up, click it again, it came down. All right, up, down, up, down, down, and click it again. Up, okay, down, up, up. Okay, so there's a problem here is if you interrupt it, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's a little off now. It's a little bit high off the ground now. Okay, that's a different different bug, I guess. <clears throat> so you could put a maybe a lock on its sliding. Or it has to come down to its floor position, but we don't really know its floor position. Because we're just animating offsets. In fact, if you could lift this up using the transform and you clicked on it, it would still go up by three. Hmm. Well, it's a limitation of it, but I can live with it for now. So, um... Okay, so we fixed the door bug. Flips in the air. Okay, door manager. Should probably shut off during edit mode true. Okay, that's another issue. Handle an entity animated offset for rotations. Ah, uh, yes. So we do animated offset, which takes a position. It doesn't take rotation yet. So if we wanted to animate something to rotate. So rotate could be complicated because it rotates from its center. Okay, so that's a to-do. Handle assigning constantly spinning rushes continuously. Continuously spinning meshes. Can okay, create red door red key. We did this enhancement load initial ammo, ammo quota from session storage? Oh, probably not. Low priority. We write monster movement without using nav mesh. Did all this. Well, I didn't remove some of them, but essentially it doesn't load. So I left some of the code in the controller there. It's just never accessed. Pick up health. 
Okay, we don't, okay, that's an enhancement. Transient items and the state is stored for the session, but the session is over. The state returns to original setting. Yes, we did that. Items picked up or grabbed. Items that are released. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, the ammo. Okay, a released gun. does not contain ammo. Ammo is picked up by the user. So if you pick up... So if you have no ammo and someone gives you... and someone with ammo was shooting a gun then gives you the gun it should have some ammo in it create utility for placing a shootable in any avatar's hand a few more member stating the options, but not is it if not a shootable. Uh, if someone grabs a hundred million, but then someone's going to receive a gun, so they don't have a girl who's holding it. I think we fix this. We do persist who's holding what in the entity history. Didn't do it this way though. On release, it changes the firm future. So now, now grabbing and release doesn't do that. So only the transform permanently changes that. So we avoided making these changes. We didn't do any of these. Okay, yeah, we ditched the navigation mesh. Turn that raise. There seems to be a huge number of Remember messages regardless. Guns should have a limited number of bullets. Uh, yes, they do have a limit. Drawing new avatar head, yes. Sculpting anything there. So I think I want to prioritize these things actually. These might actually add a lot of variety to our models. Doors, ammo guns have state. How many bullets left? Um, Session state, temporary session state. When designing the space, its initial state as position open, close, energy return. We're playing these components temporarily. Create an edit toggle movement where events don't include session. Snapshot of events without session go into entity. Okay. Gen server terminates all commands. So, yep. Anything. Create a box. Okay, so these are other utilities that I wanted, other concepts. See, we're only at line 55, and this thing all goes all the way down, all these ideas that I've had. Man. <clears throat> combine primitives into a combined mesh. Serialize the scene, optimize for performance, create primitive. Uh, what is this talking about? Front end gets spawner through serialization. If the leader never in the creation, make land verify by the level of the fact that adjust. Did I adjust? 
think I did, right? I wrote some JS tests. Yes, I wrote one test. And this doesn't work. What's this? So it is in there. Um, Event play the event that back end check the current snapshot is created. Front end check the bevel infrastructure is created. Okay. Create a set of events to design a map of a game. Alright, let's just see if we have successfully created a game here. Oh, yes, for every spawner, uh, spawn manager. No, it's agent manager. Agent manager isn't spawning enough, so I want to spawn an event, uh, an enemy for every spawn point that you have. So here's our update if we're the leader. If agent's count is less than member's count multiplied by wave number multiplied by the number of spawn points that you have. Well, maybe we want to cache this because it's not likely to change anything. So you have agents, you have wave number, and uh, this agents, what wave number you're on, and let's see, existing agents get all enemy spawn points, and we'll just cache this. So we'll say. Public number of spawn points, number of enemy spawn points. I don't even need to know the number, right? Just, just everyone, every spawn point, do this. So I should just do get this, get all enemy spawn points uh, for each spawn enemy spawn point, which is a mesh. This agents, if this agents count, number of agents spawned, is less than the total number of people multiplied by the wave number, then, I mean, there, the, Because they're sharing this thing, it's not going to spawn out more.
just gonna say uh, this or I'm about let enemy spawn point equal this and then <clears throat> iterate through them for each enemy spawn point and put this inside if agents count less than members count multiplied by enemy spawn points length then then create one agent out of this enemy spawn point dot hold on what was it position yeah enemy spawn point position so it, by myself agents count is one <clears throat> actually agents count in the beginning will be zero right because this this thing is zero and uh, what is agents count? Agents count is object keys length. It'll be zero. And when I'm logged in, it'll be one. And if I have two spawn points, this will be one times two, it'll be two. And the wave numbers right now is just one, two. So if this is true, then spawn point one will create one. And then it'll go to spawn point two. And this is still going to be true, so spawn point two will create one. And then if I have three, it will continue to create one. And then if one of them dies, uh, it'll iterate them starting with the first spawn point. Um, so I guess this is okay. Let's try it. So let's go to a place with spawn points. This one just has one spawn point. And we're on top of it. Okay. And then let's turn on edit so I can't be attacked. And we'll just construct. Let's move that spawn point. And then go to game constructs and we'll create another enemy spawner. Ooh, created two. Oh, I follow that logic. And as long as it was true, it created two more. It doesn't create any more than that. But let me look at that logic. It said agents count, which was one for the first loop. And member count, which is one, is just me. Enemy spawn points is two. So it created one, and then it went to the next one. And it should have been that agent's count was two, which is not less than, well, it's actually, yeah, it, two is not less than two. Should have been the second count. So there might be some kind of race condition here. So let me see what happens if I create yet another enemy, whoops, enemy spawner. This goes back here. It's not what I wanted to move. I wanted to move, move this thing. And let's create another game construct. Let me back up a little bit, see exactly what happened here. Then you create an enemy spawner. Bam. Okay, that one did not create another one. Which is 
fine. Oh, I think I took myself off. Agent's count is, uh, member's count is actually zero now. We go member's count. No, 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 member's count counts. I'm just not eligible to be attack. I'm in there. I think. Yeah, I'm in there. I just can't find anybody. Why is this guy off in space? This guy's stuck. I'm gonna put you out of your misery here. Let me grab this gun. I can't grab the gun because I'm an editor, right? Okay. Close it now. Thank you. Hello there. Whoops. Bye. Whoa. There's a thing with my logic. I got a lot of enemies to kill. A lot of bullets. It's actually kind of fun when it's challenging. I'm gonna die. Yeah, actually we can just detach the, when you die we can detach the camera pan controls, that means you can't move at all. Or we can just turn off your um, WASD and cursor keys. We can easily do that. Right? Okay, so I made some progress on a couple things. Let's take a break.